Joe Biden has won the American presidential election. The BBC projects that he's crossed the threshold of 270 electoral college votes needed with a win in the state of Pennsylvania. He will now become the president in January, pending the outcome of any legal challenges. Boris Johnson joined other world leaders in tweeting his congratulations to Joe Biden and soon-to-be Vice President Kamala Harris. The president-elect has now won 279 electoral votes as he's also won Nevada this evening, though that number is likely to go up as he's also ahead in other outstanding states. Well, this is how the electoral map looks now, with just a few states left to declare. However, the Trump campaign has indicated their candidate does not yet plan to concede. Well, we'll be heading to the Democrat headquarters in a moment, but first let's go live to our North America editor, John Sopel, who's outside the White House in Washington. John. Tina, in just over two hours' time, Joe Biden will address the nation for the first time as their president-elect. Exactly 48 years since he was first elected to the Senate. By his side will be Kamala Harris, who will become the first person of colour to be vice president, the first woman to be vice president. Here at the White House, Donald Trump has returned from playing golf and still in an angry mood, tweeting that there was electoral fraud and that the election has been stolen from him. After five long and tense days of waiting in cities that have historically voted Democrat, there was an explosion of noise and an outpouring of relief. that one, Donald Trump had been defeated, and that two, Joe Biden had been elected. And the emotions were probably in that order. They're celebrating as though their team has just won the World Cup. Cloud nine. Yes, Simply like it feels nine. cleaner. We cried four years ago. We went out on our rooftops and screamed in shame for our country, and now we're screaming in joy. Just listen to Washington's soundtrack today. There is celebration going on after five days of tension, which has now dissipated. And this will be echoed in cities across the land. And if we turn the camera around this way, well, there's the security fence that keeps the people away from the White House. CNN projects Joseph R. Biden Jr. is elected the 46th president of the United States. It was just after 11 o'clock this morning when news came that Joe Biden had crossed the victory threshold by taking Pennsylvania. The agonizing wait was over. Kamala Harris, who now makes history by becoming the first woman and person of color to be vice president, was out for a run when she heard the news. We did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> and Joe and Jill Biden posed for this photo, the future first lady's hand planted strategically to block out the word vice. Last night, Joe Biden gave another holding statement, increasingly confident, assured that the tide of history was flowing in his direction. We don't have a final declaration of victory yet. But the numbers tell us it's clear, tell us a clear and convincing story. We're going to win this race. But for all the joy in the cities, Trump supporters are enraged, believing the president's claim that the election has been stolen, that there's been fraud, that the man they've put their trust in is being turfed out unfairly. Donald Trump this morning left the White House to go and play golf, something he'll soon have a lot more time for. But even driving into his club, the reality of his situation was brought home to him. This has been a week where everything seems to have come up short. Though ever the showman, he stopped to pose with a couple getting married. Thank you, Mr. President. We love you. Have a great life, right? Yeah. <laughs> the president is determined to fight. His lawyers are fanning out across the country. But what's their case? There are allegations of plenty, but substance seems thin. The word that Donald Trump hates most in the whole world is loser. But with his departure from the White House now seemingly inevitable, it may be the word that sticks. John Sopel, BBC News, Washington. For the president-elect, now 77, it's not only been a long few days waiting for this result, it's been decades trying to fulfil a lifetime ambition. Mr Biden announced his first campaign for the White House back in 1987. Our North America correspondent Nick Bryant joins me now from the Democrats' headquarters in Delaware. Nick. 
They're preparing for this drive-in victory rally here tonight, part of this long and extraordinary political journey that began in the U.S. Senate. It went to the West Wing, where Joe Biden served as Barack Obama's vice president. But now he gets to sit behind the desk in the Oval Office. The White House will become his home. Now, Joe Biden loves quoting the words of the Irish poet Seamus Heaney about how hope and history rhymes. Well, today, that happened for Joe Biden. He's got one of the most electrifying smiles in US politics and how he must be rejoicing now. At the age of 77, Joe Biden has fulfilled his personal American dream. He's about to become the occupant of the White House. This former vice president was the candidate who offered soft jazz after the heavy metal of the Trump years. Hi, Morgan. How are you? It's great to see you. Easy listening moderation, a presidency Americans could have on in the background. Eight years of Donald Trump can fundamentally change who we are. I really mean it in a, in a significant way. He was never the most inspiring of candidates, but his geniality made him hard to demonize. Mr. Biden, a quick word for the BBC. The BBC, I'm Irish. Joe Biden. The White House has long been the target of his ambitions. He announced his first presidential bid in 1987. And he tried again in 2008, but ended up getting the second slot as the vice president to Barack Obama. This also gives the internet one last chance to <laughs> talk about our bromance. Despite the generation gap, they developed a bond like brothers. It was sealed when Barack Obama awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Recognition to this pillar of the Washington establishment of his decades in public service. His personal narrative is one of recurring grief. In the early 70s, he lost his first wife and baby daughter in a car accident. Five years ago, he had to bury his grown-up son, Beau, who died of cancer. A life that is a model. It's a life story that found an echo in these sorrowful times. I'd like to be able to say we're going to be back to normal next Friday. The coronavirus meant he spent much of the year sequestered in his Delaware home. He almost became the invisible candidate. At a time when the method of campaigning became a campaign issue in itself, he kept his social distance and cast himself as the anti-Trump, almost portraying this election as a battle of good versus evil. If you entrust me with the presidency, I will draw on the best of us, not the worst. I'll be an ally of the light, not the darkness. From when the results first started coming in on election night, it's been a sometimes fretful wait for the supporters of Joe Biden. But now they can celebrate. This finally is his moment. 2020 is his year. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Delaware.